Hi and welcome to this video on exception handling. Hi, I am Raghavendra, an expert in AI, ML and data engineering. By the end of this video, you will be able to understand the different types of errors, understand the need for handling exceptions, write Python code and handle exceptions. Errors can be of two types, syntax errors, it's a mistake which a programmer has made in his code. The second is runtime errors. Your Python interpreter is not okay with a piece of code which you have written. It has flagged it as a runtime error. Errors stops the execution in the program and we need ways or mechanisms to handle it in the form of exceptions. Syntax errors are to be dealt by the programmers and it's the responsibility of Python programmers to deal with it. So exception handles runtime errors. Exception handling will provide a mechanism to handle errors and we will have to require a mechanism to handle error because to provide some custom error messages when things did go wrong and we need a mechanism not to stop the program but we will have to continue the program at the time of errors and we will also have to perform some kind of cleanup activity like if suppose the file is being opened there is an error in between the code and then we can't just stop the program by not closing the file we'll have to close the file as well right so exception handling uh, provides us a mechanism uh, to handle these kind of scenarios so what do we do in exception handling is we are going to enclose the code with a try block which is to be handled by an exception. We are going to specify the exceptions to be handled in the accept block. Okay, let's look at the code. So here is a piece of code which takes keyboard input of a temperature in one scale and converts it to another scale. So let me execute this code. So it takes temperature as an input. So say I enter temperature as 36, it's going to give me a temperature in another scale that is 2.222 something, yeah. So now if I don't enter a numeric value for temperature, say suppose I enter something like say hi, yep, you get an error. In which line you're getting an error? You're getting an error in this line number two and what error is that? It's a value error. Here you are attempting to convert the input whatever you have given to float and high is unfortunately your interpreter is not able to convert it to float, it throws an error. So knowingly or unknowingly if the user enters a non-numeric, so it throws an error. So let's handle this error as an exception. So I'm going to enclose this piece of code in the try block. And the error I get is the value error. I can have any error there or possibly all the errors which could occur in the piece of code which I have written. So here possibly it's the value error. So I say accept value error which I want to handle in case value error occurs in the piece of code within the try block. I am going to execute the line within the accept block for value error. Let me execute. So I enter a valid number, say 90. Great. It converted to float. Did the computation on this line and printed. So there was no error. So this piece of code was never executed. Let me now once again execute. Instead of a number to be entered, I enter hi. What happens? This line is going to result in error. So the Python interpreter immediately stops the program execution and the control will be jumped to the exception handler. So it comes to the accept block. So what was the error? It was value error and there is a matching exception block for value error and it prints this. And by the way, any other errors, this piece of code would be unable to handle it. But fortunately, there was a value error which occurred and there is an exception block there to handle that and it prints this message, right? So instead of this messy output in the form of an error which you see here, you have a meaningful message coming up. So 
saying that hey you have not entered a number right you entered high right right so this this would be really hard for non programmers to understand hey what exactly went wrong there could not convert string to float it's more uh, with technical jargons but however here you have a custom message which is being printed over there this is the benefit of handling errors through exceptions yeah so here is another piece of code here so i'm doing some computations i'm taking input of temperature in one scale converting it to another scale and in case if i am getting value error uh, that is i wrongly enter a numeric value for temperature converting to float becomes a problem so the value error is going to be handled here so i will enter the temperature the right numeric value i'll just enter 90 over there and let's see what happens there is still an error there and i'm not handling all errors i'm only handling value error in this case but value error did not occur but there was a different error that is zero division error so there is a mistake in this program logic i am making an attempt an accidental attempt to divide by 0 which my python interpreter flags it as an error and that error is not handled in the form of an exception and it throws the program execution stops there is no custom error messages so there is no restriction on the number of errors to be handled in the form of exception so i can have n number of exception block or except blocks in my code so i will handle the value error i will also handle the zero division error there so let me execute this so 90 so what happens here this line of code give me an error it made an attempt to divide by zero so the control immediately jumps to the exception block for zero division error and it prints this line so you are attempting to divide by zero please check your math so there is a uh, mistake in your programming logic which you need to change right so this is what you get so you can have n number of exception block one per error which could possibly occur within your try block okay let's move on and i'm going to introduce you to another block called as the else block so we have the except block you can have one or more except blocks we have the try block we have the one or, we have one or more except blocks and we have the else block so in case of no errors in case of errors so your program control is going to jump to one of these exception blocks but in case of no errors you enter into the else block right so enter high it jumps there is a value error it jumps into this exception block and prints this custom message right and let me execute this again i enter temperature as 90 yes there is no error but what do i do i'll have to continue my program i'll have to print uh, the output right of the converted temperature this else block is going to serve that purpose so what do you do if there is no error you can still have the flexibility of continuing the program so unlike if your error is unhandled so you will have to stop your program but here in case of no errors you will have to print the message there or print the output something like that yeah so i have another block called as except right so this is a default except block right so in case there is any error which you don't know which could possibly so there is your handling value error you are handling zero division error so there could be other error which you don't know right you don't know the name or a phrase for that right you just say except any any error other than what you could think of it does occur so it will get into this unknown uh, error block right and as usual you as well have this else block when in case of no error you are going to print the converted temperature value so let me execute this so i am going to have say hi so you says comes to this block you have not entered the number and then i execute again right you just say 
unknown error. So there is some mistake in my programming logic computation and you come here. I actually don't know what exactly has happened, but still I'm handling it as an error and I can go ahead and debug my program. Yep. So that's the case there. Next is I have another block called as the finally e block. So else block is going to be executed when in case of no error, the finally e block is going to be executed when you have an error or no error. So you are trying to open a file uh, which could be possibly prone to some error. So you just put it inside the try block. So you have, you can get possibly get file not found error. You're going to handle it in the except block, unable to open the file. Finally block, irrespective of whether there was an error or no error, you're going to have that finally block being executed. So, so there was here, looks like there was, it was successful in opening the file and this block never got executed and finally block with error or no error, you at last want to execute something. Okay, you're done with the program, uh, you're coming out of the program or you want to print some values of some variables or something so you can use the finally block. So here as well, so I don't have this file here, sample file one.txt uh, does not exist. So it results in file not found error, I'm handling it. Print this message and my program will still enter into this finally block, execute that statement. Let's see that out. Yep. So you are unable to open this file. Here is the custom message from this block being printed and you also have this finally e block. So in the previous case, there was no error, file was successfully opened, but still the finally e block was executed. And here there was an error, still the finally e block was being executed. So here is the summary of all the blocks. Try is the block where you are going to enclose your entire piece of code, which you want to handle the errors in the form of exceptions, except to specify various exceptions for handling. Else block, if no error, you're going to execute that block. Finally, error or no error, you want to execute this block. Thank you for watching this video.